Hello, everyone, and welcome to another uh, retrospective review. Uh, still going through the Nightmare on Elm Street series. It's been a while since we've done one, but uh, we are here tonight to discuss Freddy's Dead, the attempt by New Line Cinema to end the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. And once again, I am joined by Paul. Paul, uh, please introduce yourself. Hey, yep, I'm Paul. You can find me on the uh, Tales from the Flipside YouTube channel or uh, uh, at Paul's Problem CBSI on Instagram where I just post stuff, try to make you laugh, whatever. Yeah, so um, Freddy's Dead. Uh, this is like the first one, and I, I was very, very young when this came out. Like, I wouldn't have gone and seen this in the theater, but I was old enough to like remember it, like mm -hmm. coming out on home video or whatever. Um, and when I was a kid, I liked this one quite a bit. And mm. as you get older with this one, it just sucks more and more. Um, but yeah, Paul, what'd you think about it? I, I it was, it was pretty atrocious. Uh, it's like they tried to take dream, like a bit of dream warriors and try and throw that in there. At the beginning, we were, we were talking that opens like a Nintendo game or like, you know, 10 years in the future it, it was just it followed no plot and it, uh, it was pretty bad it's pretty bad yeah uh and i'm gonna try to find that um screenshot so i can share it um because <laughs> it is like unbelievably cheesy right from the get-go so so yeah so i found it um now let's show this now in in actuality like a bunch of stuff pops up on the screen with this uh to kind of you know like give the story of what's happening but basically um the <laughs> idea is the idea is what, what is it now Paul? see this is the other thing is this movie is the definition of going one, through one ear and out the other like i don't it's, i it's don't a, it, it has no like overarching plot that gets you connected to anything whatsoever it's yeah, just a bunch it, of shit happening yeah it all it is so that it's springwood ohio 10 years from now where it's this town it's this town where there are no more no more children like whatever cutoff age for freddy it is like no no one else in that city is alive except for one kid yep right and then it opens and he's in a plane and um i don't know and, and his and kids get, enter the yeah, room. And his kids and, enter the room, and it, my town does not have any uh, does not have a lack of children. Um, anyway, um, and then they just go around the house screaming their parents' name till they find them. Um, anywho, his kids on a plane, and then he just it it just there's no plot. He gets sucked out of the plane. Freddie uses him to to get to apparently his daughter, which no one knew about until now. Yeah, right? they're, they're, it's very similar to Jason Goes to Hell in that they're just yeah. making shit up and yeah. retconning the series. It, it, like, they think it's going to be special or something, but it is. It's a hunk of garbage. And, and and you're right. Like, the kid, is he dreaming? Is he not? Like, th there's a lot of that going on in this movie, too, where, like, the rules don't make sense anymore. I don't yeah. really understand. And they borrow from the other movies. Like you said, there's the whole Dream Warrior aspect where... Uh, it takes place partially in like a like a youth home for troubled youth or whatever. Right. Um, there's the dream uh, master concept where it's like like he needs to use this kid to pull in other people into his world because he's kind of he's run out of kids to kill. Right? I mean, yeah. Why? But you, why? Why? Why is he only stuck in this Ohio town? when he lives in people's dreams, like there's no explanation for that. And I, I thought they were going to stop the insanity and like have him wake up on the plane. Like he's dreaming on the plane, but no, they just kept on rolling with the trash. Yeah. He ends up like, and that's where the whole, like, I, I think I mentioned to you that this is very Looney Tunes inspired. And there right. is like literal Looney Tunes shit in this. Like there's yeah. a scene right at the beginning, the one we're talking about, like, 
uh, he ends up like he's Freddie's driving a bus and he hits the kid and he and he hits the brakes and the kid flies like and breaks the barrier of Springwood into another town or or does he end up in Springwood? Which that is was, it? yeah, that was weird because the the sign on the bus I, I saw that too. I caught that as well. The um the sign said now leaving Springwood, right? But then he's pushed into Springwood. So he's going backwards. Like, I don't I, get it. I it, don't, it, I don't know. I don't know if the, the nutty nut house, the, the kids, uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest house is in Springwood or not. I feel I, like maybe they leave and go to Springwood and that's where yes. they run into like Roseanne and shit. The, right? Yeah. So, the weird carnival of everyone so, in this town is just mental. Like it's, it was, um, it was like, uh, I text you in the mouth of madness. Like people yes. was like, what's happening? Everybody's insane. Yeah. It's like in the mouth of madness, only not good. Um, <laughs> and yeah. And, and in that scene, the, the Looney Tunes reference, um, would be, uh, this right here. So, so essentially what happens is, uh, he hits the brakes and this kid flies through, <laughs> Like, I, is this Freddy trapped in Freddy's version of hell where there's no kids to murder? And then somehow he lures this kid in and he's pushing him out because now it's like the same area, but daylight on the other side. I mean, I'm assuming this is the dream world that the kid is in. And somehow he physically got like the kid sleepwalks or something and somehow ends up in the other town. But basically, kid ends up in the other town. He's in kind of a nut house deal. Uh, you know, um, the, the movie, I can't tell if they want you to believe that it's Freddie's kid. Like there's supposed to be a mystery set up as to who Freddie's kid is, but right. they show a part of a flashback, um, already like before they even present that of a little girl with Freddie. So mm -hmm. right away you're like, okay, well, if that, if he's Freddie's kid, who was the little girl in the flashback, right? Yeah. I mean, I, uh. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, the the concept of Freddy has killed every kid in the town is kind of interesting. Um, yeah. Like there's nothing left and it's just this like weird place where all these adults are left with no children and they're they're all kind of squirrely and nuts. But but the execution is so bad. I mean, this movie is really fucking bad, you know? Yeah, it's... I mean, I don't even know. It's just jumping or it's jumbled in my head, just the silliness of it. And and then oh man, so he's in the nut house and uh the the one therapist lady convinces he just takes him to the back to where he they somehow figure out that's where he's from, right? I, yeah, I don't understand. I just watched it. I don't even remember. Yeah, I don't and I did too. I watched it two nights ago. I don't remember, and maybe it was because I was so fucking bored. I was looking at my phone or something, which, I mean, I hate to admit that you do that, but when it's a shit movie, that happens more often. Um, but uh, I don't remember what conversation they had that had her, like, interested as well. Because it ends up, spoilers, that she is Freddy's kid. Right. The doctor is. And how did Freddie know that the kid would end up at the asylum, like, or the, 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 you know, halfway house or whatever? Uh, I guess, uh, yeah. like, I guess he pushed him to the town knowing that's where it was and that he would get picked up. I, I mean, but really? Oh, and then, oh, when he pushes through the portal, he has money, maybe a pack of cigarettes, and then an article about this missing freddie's wife this missing woman from the that's town right. so that's the link okay that's, that's the, the link. follow the article saying edgewood or whatever the town was good job yeah. good job paul way to pull <laughs> that out because i was lost there oh yeah so um yeah we get there then we go i mean it's funny too because you can talk through this whole movie in literally like two minutes everything that fucking happens so you get there then they end up on this. There, there's a few kids there that are supposed to be like your new version of the Dream Warriors, only without any personality or anything yeah. likable about any of them. And they take that van, and there's three kids that are going to steal the van and leave. Um, I guess I would say that the blonde girl with the abusive dad kind of led to some interesting character stuff. A little bit. 
you know, she's probably, yeah, she's probably one of the deeper characters in the in yeah. the movie. Yeah. So like each one of them, one of them's deaf. One of them which has I, like, which I'm sorry, which I thought was cool that the, his, the, his, his stuff is cool. Yeah. And then what was yeah. the other one? What was his problem? Anything? Well, I don't know. Well, the stoner guy, the stoner kid, Breck and Meyer from like Clueless and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, oh God, Rat Race and stuff. He, uh, he was like the son of a rich, rich, he was like a rich kid, like a rich, spoiled stoner kid, you know? So they all had their own little thing going on. Um, but they end up like getting lost. And I don't know who's asleep and who's not. Yeah. I don't understand what is happening. Yeah. I, and I don't think I can. Because I think the movie is so broken as far as the rules are concerned that right. it just doesn't make sense. So yeah, yeah you can't you can't help but be lost. And, and as a kid, I, you know, it's like, what the fuck did I know? I didn't care, you know. Right. So I just saw Freddie has some goofy one liners in this. Um, I there's one involving video games where he says, "Ooh, great graphics!" <laughs> that I like. Um, but yeah, it's garbage, man. And I should have I should have gotten a clip of the um the the Q tip scene because I actually Ooh. think that's a that's a pretty good one. That's that pretty one got me. Yeah, that one got me. And uh, I did like some of the effects, the like bloody TV and the the Inagata Davida scene. I yeah. was chuckling. Yeah. <laughs> it was it had some moments, but man, it wasn't uh, heavy on that side of the scale, that's for sure. No, no, it certainly wasn't. Um I do think uh, you know. They end up in a house and it's like it turns into Freddy's house, which again, don't understand how that's happening. Um, but it turns into not Freddy's house, Nancy's old house, excuse right, me, right. the nightmare on Elm Street house. Um, and you can imagine when they like wrote this, like, ooh, this will bring it all together. <laughs> like, this is the final, you know, nightmare on Elm Street. This will be so cool. We'll have all these nods to the original. Johnny Depp has a cameo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, they end up there and everybody ends up there and Freddie starts killing people off and shit. Um, then we get to her learning. How does she learn that Freddie is her dad? Oh. I, Does he show her? She has the the flashbacks. Man, oh, uh, got yeah, it. go ahead. No, so the one kid who thinks Freddy's his dad, like basically, yeah. Freddy tells him, like, "Nope, you're wrong." Like, oh, yeah. I had a daughter. Blah blah blah. And then the kid gets killed. Another Looney Tune scene, by the way. He's falling from the sky, and Freddy's like pushing like a a bed uh, of of spikes underneath, waiting to catch him. You know, like a wily e. coyote. Right. Type. Yeah. Perfectly. Right. Yeah. So so there's that, and then the kid dies, and before he dies, he says it was a daughter or whatever, and tells her, so she figures right. it out. Um, there is one thing that I kind of like in this though. Uh, What's like that? I, I like, and this should have been the entire movie. Um, so this movie had a 3d gimmick in it, um, in the theater, you had 3d glasses and literally in the movie when, when the main girl is going to sleep to go look for Freddie, oh. she puts on the 3d glasses. And that was the moment where you actually were supposed to put yours on. Oh, so like okay. that was That's the connection cool. there. Um, but that sequence basically becomes like a trip through Freddie's memories. Yeah. Um, and I think if that's the whole movie, like Freddie's always inside our characters' heads, right? Like, what about the whole movie is like somehow the tables have turned and you know, like these people get to torture Freddie, yeah. you know. Like so, I I like that concept. Um, and there's four main memories. Now, what what did you think of that idea? Out of curiosity, like, or did you just think it was retconning and stupid, or, or no? You know? I, I mean, it was it was adding depth to the character, but it just it, you know the movies jump all over the place. It didn't. Fo there's no clear path to follow anyway. But it, yeah, I think it was a neat concept of what you know what caused him to be this way because they threw out a left field oh he had a family and a wife and so i mean yeah you know does freddie need a family like really though like you know what i mean it doesn't uh, fit with who it doesn't fit with you know this whole he killed kids thing i don't yeah he killed kids and nobody ever mentioned that he had a family like what right. happened to, to i guess his wife's dad whatever but it's like no 
I mean, you had oh, to assume oh. this guy was just a loner. Live, you know what I mean? Who, like, I, go ahead. I think what it is, he said it. I killed. He said I killed all those their kids. So the kids who made fun of him, he must have waited till the, everybody gr- waited until everybody grew up, carried this grudge for years, and then waited for them to have kids and then killed their kids. I guess that's well, only I can think of. Yeah. Well, he also said they took you away from me, so I took their kids away from them. Right, so that it's timeline like, doesn't line up then. Right? Well, it's like okay. why wouldn't he have gone to jail for the wife being killed? Like I don't. Well, she disappeared. Well, they do imply, they imply that, so the daughter said, there's a big thing about, I'll never tell. And like the wife said that when she found his, his nasty gloves, but Hey, we're talking about it. Let's just show one of the clips from the memories that kind of relates to this. So, yeah, so Freddie's wife caught him basically with all of his, you know, nasty shit, right? Uh, And wasn't going to tell anybody. He kills his wife. Then the daughter comes out and sees him, like, banging her head against the post and killing her. And the daughter says she won't tell either. And and Freddie comes out and says at one point, but you did tell, didn't you? And it's like. So when, when did she tell, is this how Freddie got caught? Like the, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause, cause the whole thing was like, Freddie got caught uh, and the, the courts didn't sign the paperwork in the right place so that right. he, got, he escaped. So all the parents got together and killed him. But is that, is that what they're talking about? We don't know. Right. Uh, I don't know. It, I don't know either. I would almost, I don't know. I'd have to talk to a fan of the movie, I guess. Who would know? Yeah, I don't think there's. I don't think you'll find many. Uh, she was at that horror convention, and like with the ladies of Elm Street, the main girl in this, Lisa Zane, Billy Zane's sister, by the way. Yeah. Um, and the, her line wasn't very long. <laughs> uh, and that's yeah. another thing too um, to bring up here is that they had like a series going. Like three with Kristen. Kristen passed the baton to Alice. Alice had her fifth movie. And it's like none of that fucking matters or happened anymore in this one. Yeah, they they definitely just decided to come out of left field. I wanted to say about the the character who was deaf, his they they go a little bit, they tell about the parents. So the one kid's rich, the one dad is a is an asshole who's just not a good person. And then um the mom for the deaf kid, excuse me. Um, the Q-tip thing we talked about earlier, he's deaf in one ear because she Q-tipped the heck out of his ear and, and he's deaf now. So in the thing, Fre- uh, Freddie has this Q-tip that's this long and he goes all the way through his head. Oh man, that one got me. Yeah, that, just, was yeah. that was good. That was good. And his, his, um, his hearing aid like suctions to his head. So everything's, and then everything's extra amplified. So Freddie kills him with sound pretty much. I, I thought that was a really one of probably one of the neat neater or if not the neatest storyline of this one or deaths, I guess. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, the video game one, I think was probably really timely for when it came <laughs> out, you know, he like basically takes Breck and Meyer's character and inserts him into a video game um, and kills him that way. Yeah. Uh, which again, we're this is where the movie's getting so stupid and goofy now, where it's like when Freddy's playing as him in the game or whatever, the kid's like bouncing up and down in real life, like yeah, it's Looney Tunes again. Just yeah, right. Yeah, even and, wasn't it? Uh, he was somewhere earlier and uh, was jumping 
at the at the center, I think he was jumping up some steps that weren't yes. there. And I was just Yeah, no, but, there was a scene with the main kid, the guy who when he first gets to the 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 asylum place, I want to call it it's a halfway house of sorts. Yeah. Um, he walks upstairs in his dream and he literally is walking like up imaginary stairs. And there was like a security guard who like noticed him walk by and then they just cut and the security guard's not there and he's doing this. It didn't make any sense. Um, yeah, it's, he, he opens the door in his dream and then he sees that padded room or whatever with himself in it. And then he backs up and knocks the security guard out a window and that's it. Yeah. Okay. I'll go a zero story window. He just falls like, out. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. It's fucking terrible. It's bad. Uh, it's absolutely bad. terrible. I don't um, even remember how they kill him in the end. It's so bad. Yeah. No, they kill him. I mean, we'll get to that. Uh, that's during this whole section, but the way they kill him is lame as hell too. Uh, which you'd think Freddie's dead. You want to make sure you got something that feels like it's going to stick, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I guess while we're talking about the kids, the girl, her big thing is she dreams about her father. Freddie kind of, her father obviously molested her, right? Um, and Freddie kind of takes the form of him and she beats his ass with like a coffee pot or something. Uh, but yeah, that's about it as far as the kids go. Now, um, let's continue through our dreams. Uh, probably my favorite dream sequence um, even though I think it probably would have tagged Freddie at a young age as being somebody to watch. So I don't know <laughs> if later on in life he would have gotten away with all he did. But um, make that decision for yourselves. I'm in his memories. See, and that goes back to the previous movies that follows the lore, Son of a Hundred Maniacs. Yeah, but how do they know? Like, how do they, the kids all knew that story? Um, From their parents, probably at home. Uh, yeah, I suppose. Okay, now why do the kids, like, turn into old people for a second in that clip? I, I don't know if that... I'd have to look again if those were all men, like those were the maniacs from the asylum. Ah, I don't I think, think so, but you might be right. I mean, either way, it doesn't make any sense. It's supposed to be a memory. Is that what yeah. he's seeing? Is that what Freddie sees? <sighs> Who knows? I don't know, man. <laughs> but yeah, kind of a neat idea. Uh, and then we've got um, another another fun cameo here. <laughs> since the day I took you in. Now it's time to take your medicine. <laughs> Thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> you want to know the secret of pain? If you just stop feeling it, you can start using it. <laughs> See, I think that scene was cut too short. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. Uh, for uh, Alice Cooper, by the way. Yeah. Um, so he went from doing the Jason Lives song, um, <laughs> The Man Behind the Mask, our favorite song on this show so far, to uh, being Freddie's dad. But yes, uh, you know, let's, let's hear it. How, what would you have done as far as that scene is concerned? I would have, it would have shown the death. I don't know. He, he he cuts cuts his throat or cuts something that throws him in the boiler. I don't know. So just something. Some, something other than just blade out and a scream. Like I, 
I would agree. Yeah, he just sticks the blade out. What did he do with that blade? Yeah. I guess we're supposed to assume he killed him, right? Uh, unless he gave him a shave. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think that actor kind of nailed the Freddy laugh, though. Like the young... Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, I thought that was pretty good. But yeah, finally, we get um, the coup de grace. The, the, we finally get to see Freddy's original death. We know what you want. I want it all! Of course you do. Then open up. And you shall be forever. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was another stupid thing. Yeah. The fucking Yafet Kodo uh, at the, the, the like dream therapist yeah. happens to have a poster of these like ancient dream demon things that they show earlier in the movie is like a setup for that i'm sorry like what who the fuck thought this was cool like yeah he could have he could have like his dying scream or something to the parents could have been like i'll i'll sell my soul to get back at you or i'll make a deal with the, if they really wanted to you know i'll make a deal with the devil to or something that was better than floating worms <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Anything like how about, I mean, I get it. You come through these sequels and it's like, okay, you need to, you need to expand the lore. That's kind of one of the requirements, right? So first of all, I don't, you need to expand the lore early in the series, right? but I think when you're making the last one, you can't, mm -hmm. it needs to be, it needs to come back to, to, you know, like, it needs to come back and be centered. It's, it's, it's a fucking mess. Um, I mean, it's, it's very Jason goes to hell ish. It really yeah. is. Yeah. Like, they, they try to expand it where his daughter puts on the glove and he's like, yeah, put on, you know, put it on. It feels good. Blah, blah, blah. To It's in your blood. Like, yeah, yeah. It's in your blood. Like, is like, she's going to really be the next Freddie and continue the mantle. Yeah. Right. But, She's known he was her dad for like 25 minutes. Yeah. Like it, it didn't affect her life at all, really. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I I mean, it's a disaster. And then we, we get through the memories and basically the way they kill him is that somebody figures out that you can grab him and wake up and take him out of the dream, which we did oh, in the yeah. first movie. Right. So like, it's just, it's gross. This this is a gross movie. Um, another one where it's like people were probably really fucking excited. Right. You know, with Freddy's dead. This is the end. Uh, cool title. Get to the theater, start watching it, and it's just a shit show. It's bad. Yeah. And and his makeup was terrible too. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's something that is noticeable. Five, five, they went for like an old weathered look. It didn't look very good in that either. But this one, it literally looks like they spent half the amount of time on it that they did in the other movies. I mean, it is it is so cheaply done. There's no painted detail um yeah. on his face. Uh, and I'm going to try to see if there's a good picture of it where you can actually hey, see it, but it's just unfinished. It looks unfinished. That's correct. It looks literally unfinished. Um, I mean, when you compare it to what it looked like in like part two, so hold on, let's just, let's do that. And maybe it'll show up on the video here. So if we look at, uh, Excuse my uh, my time here. I'm going to kill some time. I like to pad the videos a little bit, Paul. No, you know, yeah, make, it's them, all good. I, make them a little longer. He, um, you know? yeah, just the makeup's bad. It's like it. You've if you've ever seen makeup process, you know, if you've ever watched a DVD extra or whatever, and it's cool to see that process move forward. It's it's like they just stopped three right. hours into a five hour <laughs> makeup session. Yeah, it, it does. It does legitimately look like that. Now I'm going to pull my favorite Freddie makeup up. Um, and 
Oops. Well, not apparently. I don't know how to use my computer. So, um, but no, I will open image in new tab. That's what I'm looking for. So <laughs> this I'll one close this tab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I better close the right. So uh, this is my favorite Freddy makeup right here, which would be part two. Um, and maybe that shows up okay. But yeah, it's very detailed. He's got like a really uh, out there brow and everything. Yeah. Um, now this one might not look as good because it's a smaller image too. But it looks, oh, man. <laughs> it looks bad. It looks yeah. bad. So that's terrible. I don't know. I... Yeah, apparently they didn't. They probably made this in like a day. They were trying to cash in on the fucking ending. They five, I think, was a disaster. I don't think it did well in theaters. So they probably figured, okay, well, we've run out on this. It's yeah. time to end it. They threw something together quick and it sucked. It sucked. Um, now, we'll talk more about like reboots down the road, I suppose. Like, what would you do with Freddie and Jason now? Um, yeah. but, but yeah, I, I think you could still do it now. I, I, this is the final Freddy movie, um, in the original timeline, uh, mm -hmm. next, next week or whenever we review it, I think it'll probably be next week, uh, is Wes Craven's new nightmare, um, which is a new retake on number zero jump street, right? That's what, how I'm watching it or no. So. Wes Craven's new nightmare exists in the real world. Oh, okay. Like Heather Langenkamp, who played Nancy, plays Heather Langenkamp, and Robert England plays Robert England. Mm. And it exists in the real world. So okay. yeah. So I, you know, we'll watch that next. But 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 as far as the original six, not counting the remake, Freddy versus Jason. Uh, which we haven't watched either of those, and New Nightmare. Uh, what's your overall take on the series at this point? What's your favorite? What's your least favorite in the series? Um, I think we could both agree Dream Warriors was really well done. Um, least yeah. favorites. I mean, man, I didn't think they could top it, but this is, yeah, I think this one is probably my new least favorite of just – no, you know, watching the series in order, it's just baffles you. What are they doing? Yeah, no, I it's, would watch. Oh yeah, I would watch part two a hundred times before I'd watch this. Right. I mean, this is this is. I I think a lot of people shit on five two, but I think this one's by far the worst one. I, I don't even think it's really that close, to be honest with you. Right. Yeah. It's it's pretty bad, but I, I mean, I like the series. I think it's cool. Of, you know, with different directors, you you just you can't help but take different paths and different ideas. I think the lore is cool. I still think that making him a pedophile out of the blue was stupid, but yeah, I? but that was just a moment, right? We all it was a newspaper clipping. Well, uh, yeah, in part now. five. I mean, we assume we assume that he is, but that's in our brains, right? And I yeah. think it's better that way, right? Yeah, yeah, it's um, not on paper. Now, I know you're going to be shocked. Freddy's Dead was the first directed by a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go there. I don't, I'm not going to go there. I tease. I kid. Yeah. I kid for the one female listener who will ever watch or listen to this review. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's it. And, and the funny thing is the tagline on this, on the poster, they save the best for last. Jeez, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They had a cool but, marketing campaign too, where they actually brought like all the actors in from all the movies and had a funeral for Freddie and shit, like in LA or whatever. They like buried <laughs> Freddie. Like, oh, wow. yeah. So they really, uh, they, it's a disaster. This movie sucks. It yeah. sucks Definitely. really bad. Um, but yeah, Paul, uh, why don't you uh, say your goodbyes um, and remind people where they can find you? Yeah, uh, you guys can find me on uh, Instagram at Paul's Problem CBSI. Just kind of post whatever, trying to make you laugh. Follow me and see what see what's out there. I don't know. 
And as always, you can find me right here at the Bored and Annoyed YouTube channel for Just Annoyed. We're currently going through the stand right now. Um, I think uh, if Paul's up for it, we're going to also at some point be discussing the original King Kong versus Godzilla as well. So that should be just the gas. I'm sure that's a great film. Um but yeah, thank you for uh, dropping in. And uh, next up is Wes Craven's new nightmare.